Good morning, Jacks. Welcome along to the vlog. Welcome along to the brewery. We're here today on a Saturday to have a bit of a tidy up. Didn't really do much yesterday on Friday. In fact, we just got a little clip of the blowout that was created by the Verdant Early East. And what a blowout it was. But today, we're just pulling apart all the pieces of kit. We'll take off all the hoses, give them all a clean over at the sink. And we're also going to tip out any water that's in the system because there is water in the system and water equals places for nasties to grow so we'll get it all rinsed out and dried and then we'll push this out of the way and then I'll come back and I want to talk to you about the pilot kit fermenters the all-rounders and a couple of things that I've just learned about it in the first week So fermentation, fermentation in the all-rounders, here we have it. Just take a brief look at the temperatures. So we've got FE1, 20.5, and FE2 and FE3, 16.7 respectively. And that means that even though they've got more uh, active yeast in there with a Kaviak and a Verdant they are both struggling to maintain the temperature on their own after the initial kickoff so this one blew off yesterday but it did have a heat belt around it uh, the Kaviak yeast didn't so that's fermenting I can see it's moving around it's kicking out some biological heat, I'm sure, but it's not enough. So the solution is blankets. These are electric blankets, 40 watts from Argos, 10, 15, 20 quid I think they are. And then that hooks up, you just plug it in, and you can actually leave this on 24-7, provided you've got the glycol loops in conjunction with it as well so if it overheats the beer the glycol loop will just take that extra little hit out with it only being 40 watts at max it isn't a lot but it's definitely it's not going to cost you a lot of money either but it's definitely enough to just help the yeast just help boost that base temperature up to where it wants to be in order to ferment so this one's got a heat belt in this one's got a heat belt but I can't find a cable for it this one doesn't. I think I only had two of these heat blankets for the previous version of the pilot kit which I had up over there. And uh, I don't know what I've done with them. I don't know if I've thrown them away or, or what. But I'm gonna have to see if I can dig it out. I've got one of them, like I say, and that's working. But I need another one. And I need a cable for this second one here. So I'm gonna go upstairs and have a look around in there. It's a massive junkyard up there, so it's probably gonna take me all day to clean this out. If I fail that, I'll just knit down to Argos and pick another one up if needs be. And then that should cure this little issue. So I thought, I hoped, that because we've got 60 litres of beer, there'd be enough 
biological activity there to maintain that fermentation temperature and uh, you know stave off the cold particularly oh we're, we're on the first of may today so i would have thought it would have been enough but i guess not i guess it doesn't have that thermal mass to hold it the big fermenters up at 500 litres once they get going they actively need cooling even in the middle of winter because they will generate enough heat to raise the temperature up to 30 40 degrees if i just let them free rise so they need controlling these they need heating so that's what we're going to do moving forwards but what i do like about the fact that we've got these jackets on here these are the um 27 litre firmzilla jackets they also fit the 60 litre all-rounders and they're marketed to do so as well what i like about these jackets is there's enough space inside to put your heater and i think what i might do is just sew in those electric blankets into the lining of these so they're always there and then if i need to i can just plug them in and turn them on as you can see with this one i think you can see it you've got the little connector down here for the blanket and you can either have it connected or just take it off if it's not needed and it'll sit there fine or i might just leave them and put them on as and when required we'll see but they fit in nicely you can not you can't really tell that these two have got blankets in and you can they all look the same so i think you can uh, you can utilize this as a little bit of a bit of a cheat so let's see if we can get this hooked up and uh yeah look at this as well that's a bucket of hersed which I'm blowing off into, <laughs> sailor, and there is plenty of yeast which has been kicked out by both of these beers. So they have gone through a quite vigorous active fermentation stage, but they're only halfway yet, they've got a while to go. And if you just look up to the left, and you can see that is the controller for the heat blanket dangling down there, and it basically changes the settings from 40 watts on number three number two is about 20 watts and number one is about 10 watts so it's got that little adjustment there as well if you'd like to use it really quite convenient I think now this is an area where you don't get to see that you don't get to see very often and here's why it is an absolute dumping ground for all the little bits that are left over from projects you know things that we bought which we want to store out the way of the brewery there's some spare bits of pipe here for instance there's a pump there that never got utilized some three-phase cable which is for the outdoor heater oh washing machine motor all these coils came out of uh chillers remote chillers got some more of them in here as well some steel, a 240 volt low wattage element, just all sorts of stuff. Loads and loads of cable, so if I just need a bit of cable, I've got loads of cable. Glasses, loads of books from home actually, they're just being stored here. Earthenware jugs, stillage, you name it, we've got it more than one kitchen sink there are two kitchen sinks there's one there's one old brew kit old underback old old underback from rvb that one and uh yeah check this out we've even got a full conservatory up here that is actually a conservatory just being stored fridges bear trap it's not really welder stick welder that's what i started welding on that all the canopies for the beer garden they're going to need pulling out and tidying up there's all the chairs that have they're all in various states of disrepair which is why they're all stored up here if we need them again in the future oh my god but look at the state of it right if i kind of get low level and pan around it's really quite difficult for anyone to work in here so i've come up today 
and this has been done several times over the years and I'm going to start tidying this place up because heaven knows it needs it oh well this is going to be my Saturday afternoon folks what fun well hopefully it won't be too long before we can start getting these umbrellas back outside and they've obviously come out of the back room the back room of doom yeah so there we have it I have actually stacked all the chairs up and everything in this corner I've basically just taken everything off the floor right and just piled it up over there look at that that, <laughs> that looks mad on the viewfinder on the camera oh my goodness so we've got about 20 25 chairs there a full like four meter by four meter conservatory including patio doors or french doors should i say two fridges several tables two sinks jesus christ loads of insulation up in the roof there which we'll be using for the new cold rooms all these pedestals for the tables some tables at the back there as well which are out of the restaurant because obviously covid we don't have the space under the two meter one meter with added precautions regulation and then this is a big beer python look at this lots and lots of lines I don't know if you've ever seen a beer python internally probably have but there's the cooling lines that run down the middle and then all these are all product lines so obviously that can carry a lot of product and uh, yeah this is all all cable that I've ragged out of jobs when I've either been upgrading replacing repairing or just destroying other projects and I decided I'll save that because you know what it really does come in handy but there's a lot of stuff in here that is junk and we can throw there are also tools and stuff in here as well but and things that we do we want to save so I'm not chucking anything yet I've made me a little bit of space and I found I found the cable for the heater so I've put that in downstairs and we've got two heat blankets running now let's go and have a look so this is my little office which nobody really gets to see let's see it there we go filing cabinets and all that jazz but this is yeah the boring office space this is a little top of the stairs area where at the minute we've got a dog bed for Chance and Reggie when they come that's what these two pallet stackers are for as well I pull it across the top of the stairs so they can't run down if I'm doing anything where I need the dogs out of the way like using chemicals and then we also store bits of cable and stuff on this little rack I've been into it though so it's a bit of a mess got a friend's speaker uh, stands there as well I wonder if he remembers the rear you can see the top of the mezzanine from over this side so we've got a load of these stainless steel casks the bucket hole ones that we bought for a song and uh, there's a shop back there and the heater for the marquee in winter there's even a petrol hedge trimmer look at that and that is the box gutter behind the ladders for the conservatory which we've got in that back room also a couple of kilderkins 100 litre or 80 litre more accurately firkins for cascales which we don't use and I was going to turn into some type of CRP uh, thing at some point but I ended up storing them right at the back of that stuff and I couldn't find them for a long time so they never got used now here we are coming down the stairs from the office into the brewery and you can see we've got two control units on the side now because we've managed to find the other one and it's slowly bringing the temps up from 16.4 we're up to 18.1 like I say we've missed a day on these now because of that lag phase and uh, I'm sure once they get back up to temperature because fermentation is active they won't we won't notice that there's been a little bit of a fluctuation in temps but I suppose it's a benefit that it's cold and not hot if they'd have gone high 
could have caused us problems, but they haven't. They've gone low, so we should be all right in that respect. That is the that is the Kvirk bubbling away there, and the Verdant. Oh, he is bubbling. Look, he's just not underwater. If I push it across that way a touch and get it in frame, we might see a few bubbles. Give the fermenter a wobble. That normally works. Anyway, we're not here to see bubbles, are we? Look how tidy the workshop is as well. This never happens. And I can't take credit for it either. Gemma's tidied it up for us. So, just waiting for her to come back with... Oh, here she is. She's got the other blanket. Let's pop that on now. Wonderful news. So, winter nights. Look at that. Double. So, the singles are 40 watts. The doubles, it turns out, are 90. So, twice as much bang for your buck. So, we'll stick the double in there and see if that brings the temps up for us. Lovely. So the doubles don't fit inside, the double blankets don't fit, so I've had to bungee it closed for now. And it's 100 watts, I've just done a quick test on it. 100 watts on level 3, 50 watts on setting 2 and 25 watts on setting 1. So we've gone with setting 2, the others are 40 watts on setting 3 you see. So this is a lot more powerful. What I think we'll do is we'll use that blanket and we'll swap it so all these FVs if you have a look down here oh you can't see it because it's at the back you see those cables run to the back these FVs have electric blankets inside the installation there's one look you see the little controller so I think that one's got a double blanket because that one will heat a little bit these just tend to not do much so they're singles so I think we'll swap all these singles out I'll test them first I'll test the resistance and that will tell me the ohms and I can calculate the wattage and obviously what blanket is in there but yeah we'll figure out what's what we'll pull these fermenters out take the cladding off the back and swap out the heat pad Hopefully then we can use that smaller lower voltage heat pad or lower wattage heat pad for the Firmzillas and the higher wattage for the big tanks. It should help them in the winter a little bit anyway. Right, that's it. Let's get in the uh, get in the car and go home. <laughs> 